Hey guys, Andy here from Mediocre Hobbies, bringing you another fan requested video. As you guys know, I am a colossal fan of Space Marines. I have pretty much every Space Marine faction you can imagine under the sun. Um, I've done them all at some point or another. And um, yeah, somebody commented on one of my videos um, earlier in the week and asked me if it was possible that I do Mephiston, Lord of Death from the Blood Angels, uh, the new beautiful Primaris one uh, as a video. And I hadn't decided on what I was gonna do for my video Wednesday video yet, so I thought, why the hell not? So I dug through my pile of shame, pulled out my Mephiston Lord of Death, got him built up, and I'm gonna show you guys how I paint him in today's video. So it should be a really fun one. And who doesn't like Space Dracula? So yeah. Uh, before I get into it, just want a huge thank you to all of my patrons. You guys are absolutely awesome and you uh, encourage me to keep going every single day. If you're interested in getting involved with that, there's links to it below. You get access to things like a private Discord server. We have different events that happen in there as a community, like uh, painting events and stuff like that. And also you get access to an extra video every single week from me. So you get 52 extra videos a year for being a member of the Patreon. Okay, so without further ado, let's get painting Mephiston. And here is the big brute himself. Like I said, I pulled him out of my pile of shame and uh, it took a while to find him, to be honest, but let's not get into that. It's a very nice miniature, obviously Primaris sized, which is a word we all made up to uh, indicate when a Space Marine has become Primaris sized. And yeah, he hasn't got many options in the kit. He's a fairly straightforward build. You can decide to build him with a plasma pistol, outstretch and firing, or wiping blood off his mouth in the vampiric style that Blood Angels are known to be. I went for the more traditional plasma pistol in hand, mainly because it's going to be easier to paint with the outstretchedness and the open uh, torso is going to be a lot easier to get to instead of the hand being in the way. And I don't really like playing into the vampirism part of it all that much. Um, it's a little bit too on the nose for me. So I got the miniature built and sprayed black and then grey sear. I left the uh, head off and glued that separately to a spare handle that I had via the peg. And I'll just cut the peg off later on yeah, and glue his head in place. This is going to make it much easier to paint all the bits and pieces. So the first thing I'm going to start with is Blood Angel's Red Contrast, and this is going to go all over his armor panels. So there's actually less armor than you would think on Mephiston. So remember, he does have his feet uh, showing through the bottom of the robe, so make sure you get out of those. And then there's a little bit on his torso, and even his shoulder pads are the majority covered up by details and motif. Now, one of the things I will say is red is a much better color uh, to act as a base coat for gold so at this point try and get all of the bits that are going to be gold hit with this red contrast well so for instance i did the pommel and the cross guard of the sword and then when i was painting the armor i hit all the trim and all around the edges because i knew that was going to go gold anyway and it was going to work a treat flesh tear's red contrast was then brought in to differentiate the different colored reds from his robes to his armor and thank God that there is multiple colors of red contrast that make this job very, very easily. He's of course got a big epic flowing cape as befits his role as Dracula. So that's going to go uh, a coat of black for that. We're going to go into a black Templar contrast and give that a solid coat as well. Mephiston is a funny character in the, four, in the Warhammer 40,000 universe. I, I've been saying since 4th edition that he should be executed by the Inquisition, as I don't know what he is, but he is in no way, shape, or form a space marine still. He is a, a strange person. <laughs> uh, back in 4th edition, his stat line was exactly the same as a 40k demon prince, and I always thought that was a little bit too coincidental. A space marine that could go through the black rage come out the other side and yeah be changed and be far superior in strength and resilience and power to any other space marine is a little bit weird i don't trust it and my boy gabriel seth chaps from myself flesh tears doesn't trust him either considers him a monster so i trust his judgment more than anything else which is a problem because this guy's going in my flesh tears army so i don't really know how to justify that well i don't have a blood angels army yet so we'll, we'll see what happens when we get to that point Okay, with these three colors in place, it's time to start blocking in some of the more traditional colors. For that, we are going to go into, well, first of all, we've got to do Wildwood for the tiny amount of leather he's got on his uh, waist. He does have a little leather belt on. I also use this to base coat the book that's hanging off his waist. And obviously the holster for his pistol is also there as well. So Wildwood for that. You can see now the bit that I was talking about with the uh, Blood Angel's red contrast being on the cross guard and hilt of the sword. It 
it's a very imposing figure. He's a very, like, he definitely got a glow up. He's beautiful, yeah, absolutely menacing on the battlefield. Um, and like I said, every time they do this with Ezekiel, with, you know, Dante, with this guy, it's just, it's just an indication as to how beautiful all these characters are going to become when they get their Primaris or upscaled versions. I have one of my fingers crossed for a uh, new Lysander at some point in the near future. Now that we've seen in the Leviathan box set what new Terminators have looked like, I'm dying to get my hands on that. And then obviously things like Belial and oh, all the Black Templars characters that already got up, got done. They're all beautiful. I don't think they've gone astray with a single uh, Primaris miniature yet. Imperial Fist Yellow was used for the cabling that goes around his body. And then it's time to move over to Retributor Armor Gold for all of the trim. On his armor around all of those teardrops he's got a lot of little teardrop medals and stuff hanging off him and like i said the cross guard and pommel of the sword will also get done with the gold i took the time to grab some volibus pink which is like a, a whiny color pink and i painted the handle of the sword in that color very quickly i think the primaris model that i want to see almost more than lysander is Captain Cato Sicarius, captain of the Victrix Guard and personal bodyguard of Gulliman himself. I cannot wait to see what he looks like in Primaris version, and I really hope we get our hands on him at some point soon. We've gotten some, some very beautiful and very awesome choices in characters were released over the last couple of years. Some of them I do wonder, I'm like, okay, you're awesome, but why would you choose to do him before you choose to do someone like Cato Sicarius? Like they gave us a brand new Torgarden Imperial Fist character. Why wasn't that just Lysander? It's kind of confusing to me. Uriel Ventress, great model. Very delighted to have Uriel Ventress as a miniature. I would not take that away for anything. But you don't think that could have been Cato Sicarius? <laughs> would more people have bought a Sicarius or a Uriel Ventress? I'm not really sure. Okay, but the gold and silver parts applied, that basically brings all the base coats of this miniature to an end. So what I did then is I grabbed some Nuln oil and applied it all over the miniature. Head to toe, every little piece of it got done with Nuln oil. It's going to bring a nice darkness to it. And then when it comes to the highlight stage, we're going to make all the highlights nice and bright, nice and rich. And he's going to have that like menacing darkness and all the shadow. It's time to move over and get some work done on his face. So for that, we're going to go Fire Slayer Flesh. And we're going to apply this to all the skin, which literally is not a very large amount to be honest and carefully paint that onto his face make sure I get into his mouth down his neck a few other bits like that it's the only bit of skin showing the entire miniature the other part we just washed is all completely armored his gloves are are on so no hand exposed or anything like that from here we move over to agro's dunes to get his luscious blonde locks started off Agaros Dunes is going to act as a nice dirty brown yellow colour as a base coat for that. There's a couple of other details on the face. I painted in his teeth a little bit with a bone colour. Nothing crazy. And there's also some silver studs on his temples. Which I think are there to kind of generate his... Uh, magical powers through so they got tipped with a lead belcher as well i then washed the face with seraph and sepia and while it was drying i moved back over to the main miniature and started the layering process so for this i started with my fist on and i'm going to layer up all of the power armored sections of this miniature so obviously he's wearing a lot of robes so it's not as much as you would think so it's his chest shoulder pads some of his arms his feet backpack that's it really it's not really as much as you would think But I made sure to give it at least, if I didn't get a solid coat on the first try, I definitely went in and gave it a second coat. This is a part of the miniature you want to be nice and sharp, nice and crisp. And obviously it's supposed to be basically Blood Angel's armor, so try and follow any recipes you have for Blood Angel's armor that you like. Paint those sections in. The bits like the robes, there's only one character wearing a wine robe with a black cape in your army, so... The, different, the tones can be different across it. If you painted this guy 10 times and the robes are different 10 different times, that's totally fine. <laughs> There's nothing to compare it to to tell you that it's wrong. Obviously, when I was painting in the uh, Mephiston red color, I uh, followed the lines on the armor. So obviously, he's got that designed musculature style. So I didn't go up and down because that would go against the grain. I went across in a feathering motion to make sure that I kept that aesthetic of the 
the kind of sliced musculature look uh, on all the armor panel. There is a few sneaky bits of armor around that might be poking through, so do make sure you take your time, follow it around, and make sure you get all of those bits base coated in. Corn red was then brought in and layered up the robes with. And this is that once again the idea of pulling the reds in two different directions. There's definitely a danger of going kind of too red with this guy. I'm very happy that his cape isn't red. If it was, I probably wouldn't paint it red. I think that would definitely be far too much. Uh, if the bottom robe red was a similar color to the armor, I also probably would think it's too much red. So, But because this very nicely kind of goes in that different direction, more of a wine color, I think it looks fantastic. And as you can see, I'm leaving that nice dark shaded bit in the recesses and folds of the fabric. But on the, the raised areas, I'm getting a nice solid coat. I'm going to follow that process around until all the robes are done like that. Corvus Black was then my colour of choice to highlight all of the black parts, which of course are his gloves and his big epic Dracula flowing cape. On the image on the website, it was really hard to figure out whether or not his collar is metallic or black. I don't know. It looks metallic along the edges. And then I wasn't sure. I, d I decided to go for black. I pretended like it was the high arch collar of his big cape and I did it in black. If that's wrong, I'm not sorry, I think this looks cooler. If it's supposed to be metallic and you want to follow through with that, just do the lead belcher stage that we did previously on the collar. And then as you wash it down and layer it up with that as well, just add a little bit of highlight if you want to go more the, the style of the box art. Okay, it's time to highlight all of the bone parts, which is the pendant on his chain around his neck. And then at the top of each of his collars, there's skulls as well. So I did a Zandri dust coat on those and then gave them a quick highlight of Yushakti bone just to make all of the kind of skeleton parts or bone parts pop a little bit more on this miniature. He doesn't have a lot of bone on him, just those three little sections and then he's done. I could have spent some time doing something with the vials hanging off his belt as well. They put a lot of time in making them look like sloshing liquid. I didn't bother with that, it's, it's, it's an awful lot of work. Um, I'm not sure if I could have actually, like pull it off, make it look the way I wanted to. Um, that's something you might want to find from somewhere else. But I think the jet black vials trimmed with gold work just fine. You can add a bit of gloss varnish to them if you want to make it look like it's black liquid in there. It's also totally fine. Totally up to you. So we then got in with some lead belcher and highlighted up all of the gold and silver parts on this miniature. So touch highlights for the gold and straight normal highlights for all the metallic parts. The blade of his sword. And all the epic detail. Make sure you get the rest of the handle of the pistol as well. Like I said, this was a requested video. I had no real intention of doing my fist on anytime soon. I just knew I wanted to add it to the channel at some point. Um, and yeah, I didn't actually know what I was doing today yet. So you know, I was like, okay, go for it. Why not? It's a cool model. You guys want to see it. And I can't be happier that he's now completed uh, any of my Flesh Terrors army. I'm really happy with how he is turning out and how he turns out in the end. I love it. Uh, Celestia Grey was brought in to highlight the winged parts of this miniature, which are on this kind of cod piece. And then obviously across his left shoulder pad is a big epic winged teardrop. So I'm going to take my time and make sure that I highlight each and every individual feather. And then of course the big membrane that goes across the top of the wing. And if you do this right, it will make a real punchy difference to the miniature. Make it look like you've put in a lot of effort when I really haven't. Evil Sun Scarlet was brought in just to highlight all of those teardrop um, symbols that are all across his armor. Just to make those stand out once again from the, you know, the level of redness that exists across the rest of the miniature. For the face, when the shade was dry, all we did is give it a quick highlight with Cadian Flesh Tone. And then another highlight with Kislev Flesh. And this is me taking my time being very careful with the extra smart Pfizer layer brush. So as the finest brush we have. And just going along the natural creases and folds that already exist in a model that's sculpted this well. It's very easy to see where the highlights are supposed to go. Obviously the face is still tiny, it's a face on a 28mm miniature. Kids left Celeste was then brought in and basically you want to repeat the same process but a little bit less. Just lighter highlights across the eyebrow, tip of the nose, tip of the chin, lips, and the lines on the forehead. You don't have to go crazy.
Zandri Dust was then brought in. I used that to highlight the hair, trying to make it look not look like a bowl of noodles, which I think was the meme when this miniature got brought out. It looks like he has a bowl of ramen noodles on his head. I think that was just the weird color choices that the Envy Metal team decided to go with. Not that I would criticize the Envy Metal team. Absolute gods of painters. So I think at this point, there's not a lot of Primaris characters I haven't painted yet. Um, but I definitely think I will dig through and find a few more and get them done on the channel as well because you people seem to like to see them. I want to give the people what they want. Uh, Talazar Blue was brought in for sign of the energy coil. So we did it as the coil of the plasma pistol. The energy nodes going down his epic power sword. And then also I watered down a little bit of it and did it in his eye sockets just to give him a little bit of a blue glow. And then the nodes on his temples got done with a little bit of that blue as well. And with those bits kind of done and dry, that brought the painting of my fist on pretty much to a close. All I did was glue the head in place and we had ourselves a finished Lord of Death miniature who's going to sit in my Flesh Tires army. Look awesome, be awesome. A few high resolution images to finish it off i hope you guys enjoyed this if there's any more primaris characters you want me to paint please let me know in the comments below i'm more than happy to oblige okay guys and there we have it a finished mephiston ready to be taken to the battlefield uh, i really like how this guy turned out i actually don't currently have an active blood angels list but i do very much have a flesh terrors army ready to rock and roll so i'm going to be placing him in that army he's based to match so he's going to sit there very nicely hope you guys enjoyed this video if you did make sure you let me know by a uh, giving the video a like. Ask me any questions you want in the comments below. Remember, it was a comment that caused this video to be made. So if you have anything specific you'd like to see videos of, don't hesitate to ask. If I have a gap in my schedule and I can't think of anything, I'm more than happy to do a fan requested video if I think it will do well. And uh, yeah, if you're not already subscribed to my channel, it would mean the world if you took two seconds every day and hit that subscribe button. Thank you guys so much for sticking around to the very end. I'll see you in the next one.